This dry fly really needs no introduction. The parachute atoms is arguably one of the most popular dry flies ever. It floats well, it's highly visible in the water, it's fairly durable, and it really catches fish. So it is extremely popular. But some beginning tires and even intermediate tires shy away from tying the atoms because of difficulty in tying the post and wrapping the parachute hackle. So in this video, we're going to focus on some easier methods for tying the parachute post and for tying and wrapping the hackle. The hook I'm using in this video is a Firehole Sticks 419 in size 14. This is their barbless dry fly hook, but pretty much any dry fly hook in sizes 8, 10, all the way up to 22 or so will work. So we begin by getting our hook secured in the jaws of our tying vise. And we begin our fly by laying down a thread base. And for thread, I'm using UTC 70 denier and blue dun. And this blue dun is very close to the Adams gray. And I start my thread about a hook eye and a half length behind the hook eye. And that beginning point of the thread is going to mark the approximate position of my parachute post later. So I wrap all the way back to the bend of the hook, which is about where the barb would be on this hook if it were not a barbless hook. And then bring my thread back to the hook point and trim off my tag end. The tail of the parachute atoms is traditionally made with brown and grizzly hackle feathers, but I really like to use Coque de Leon. Coque de Leon, if you haven't used it, is a great tailing fiber. It's stiff, it has some great speckling, and I would encourage you to try it. But if you don't have Coque de Leon, the brown and grizzly hackle feathers work great for this fly. To prepare the tail, I like to take about three quarters to an inch or so of the feather fibers and just pull them straight out from the stem. And while keeping the tips aligned, just grab them and strip them off the main stem. I like my tail on this fly to be about a hook shank in length. So I measure that, transfer that to the back, give my thread a quick counterclockwise twist so it'll jump to the rear and make a few loose wraps to loosely bind down the feathers. And then I like to check the length of my tail in case I need to adjust it, but that looks about right. So I'll give it a few more tighter wraps back toward the bend of the hook, keeping the feathers on top of the hook shank, and then wrap forward all the way up to roughly my parachute point. Again, keeping those feathers on top of the hook shank. And then I'll trim the tag end of those feathers off. The body of the parachute atoms is made from super fine dry fly dubbing, and here I'm using Adams Gray. And we want a really small dubbing noodle here because we want a nice tightly uh, formed body, a nice trim body. So I add only the smallest amount of dubbing at a time to my thread to keep, keep that dubbing noodle small. Now I do want a little taper toward the front so I can make it a little thicker toward the bottom. And my dubbing noodle is going to be about two inches long. And I begin wrapping my bare thread back toward the base of the tail and start my dubbing just at the base of the tail. And again, I want that trim body. So I make touching wraps of dubbing forward, keeping that body nice and trim. As I move forward, I do want a little taper to the body. So I start overlapping the dubbing wraps just a bit and wrap forward to a point just back of where I want my parachute post and leave my thread hanging there. There are any number of parachute post materials, but I like to use Hairline's Parapost wing and here in white. It's a poly yarn that comes in pre-sized bunches that make it very easy to work with. Cut about a two inch length of the post material and I like to tie it in by wrapping the material around my thread and then holding the post in my material hand, bring my thread up, set my post in place and make a few wraps in front of the post and then a few more wraps to the rear of the post. And this is a point where some tires may find difficulty. I can easily wrap my thread around the very base, but once I start to move up the parachute post, it wants to flip out of the way. Now I can hold it like this and, and wrap, and some methods do that, but it also wants to flip out of the way there as well. So the method we will use to tie our post avoids this by moving the hook to a vertical position, which allows us to hold constant tension on the parachute post. 
So with my thread hanging to the rear of the post, I loosen my vise and rotate my hook to a vertical position. And this allows the gravity to hold the thread straight down. Now using my normal thread hand to hold constant tension on the post, I begin making touching wraps up the post. And it's okay if you have a few gaps. We'll pick those up on the way back down the post. And we want to wrap up to about a half to two thirds of a hook gap. And notice I'm grabbing the thread at the bottom with my fingers. And now we start moving back down the post and I'm filling in a few of those gaps that I missed on the way up the post. And I'll wrap all the way back down to the base of the post and filling in any of those gaps. Now this is not the fastest way to wrap a, a parachute post, but it's one of the easiest and it works really well. Now, once we reach the base of the post, let the thread hang and now I can loosen my vise and move my hook back to a horizontal position. The hackle for a parachute Adams is typically made from either a rooster cape or saddle in grizzly and brown. And today I'm using a cape. I have a furnace brown hackle and a grizzly hackle. Pre-prepared these two hackles by stripping all the fuzzies off the lower end and, and stripped a bare stem here. Notice this stem is quite long. It's about three-eighths of an inch of bare stem, and that's important when we wrap our hackle. Because when we place our hackle on the hook, we want our hackle, the bare stem of the hackle, to start just behind the hook eye and reach all the way up the post to just above our threads. And notice that there's a curvature to the feathers. There's a convex and a concave side. And the concave side of these two feathers should face toward the hook. So as I lay them toward the hook to tie, tie them in, we want to make sure the concave or the dull side of the feather is toward the hook. Now to tie these in, I place the concave side of the feather towards the hook and lay the stem up against the hook shank. And notice I have the tips of the bare feather stem just behind the hook eye. So I'll pull it just a little bit just to get it in just behind the hook eye. And then start making tight wraps back to the base of the parachute post. Now at this point, I pull my hackle feathers up parallel to the post, and I'm a right-handed tire, so I grab the feathers and the post together in my right hand and maintain constant tension and begin wrapping my thread around the base and work my way up the post with touching wraps, or very close to touching wraps. Now you'll notice as I rotate around with the thread, I am grabbing the thread with the middle finger of my right hand to hold that constant tension on the thread. Each wrap, I grab that thread and hand it off to my left hand and make another wrap. And I wrap it up to about the top of my post thread wraps from earlier and then start wrapping back down the post. And if the wraps aren't exactly touching, that's just fine. But just work your way back down the post. Again, grabbing that thread with that right middle finger and passing it off to the left hand. And we want to finish up with just a couple wraps behind the post and around the base of the post and leave our thread hanging to the rear of the parachute. Our next step is to dub the remainder of the body. And we want to, again, build a very thin dubbing noodle. And since we don't have much body to dub this time, we're going to make a noodle only about an inch long. And I start wrapping it to the rear of the post. And I want to build up a little thorax here. So I wrap it uh, over itself a couple of times to build a thicker section of the body and then wrap forward of the post toward the hook eye. Now I'm out of dubbing, so let me add a little bit more here. And again, it's usually easier to add dubbing than it is to take dubbing away. So I add this and I make a few wraps back toward my parachute post. And then one wrap behind the post and leave my thread hanging to the rear of the post. Now to wrap our hackle fibers, we're going to move our hook back to that vertical position in the vise, just as we did for tying in the post. The first step here is to pull down on our hackle feathers and tug them just a bit. And this puts a kink in the stem of the feather, which helps it wrap as we wrap it around the post. Now we try to keep that concave side pointed toward the 
the post. And of course, they're trying to twist on me here, but just be patient and work with them and you can keep them lined up. And then we line up the tips of our feathers and grab them with our hackle pliers. And while holding the post, in my case, in the right hand, we start making wraps with both of the hackle feathers. Now, whoops, I lost my tension there just a bit, but that's fine. And we make several wraps around the post with our hackle. And the number of wraps will depend on how thick your hackle is. And here I'm probably going to make, oh, three or four wraps. So I'm on my third wrap. And I think I'm going to stop here. And notice I pull the hackle down away from the post. And that exposes the top of that hackle feather so I can tie it off. And then I move my thread under the wound hackle, over the tag end, and over the body of the fly, around the post. Again, under the wound hackle, over the tag end, over the body, and around the post. Try not to capture any of those wrapped fibers. And then work your scissors either through those fibers or under those fibers to reach in and snip off the tag end of your feathers. And then we can move our fly back to a horizontal position in the vise, and we're getting very close to being finished. Now, some tires like to whip finish under the wrap tackle and on top of the body, but I find it much easier just to pull back and hold back on those hackle fibers and take a few wraps of thread behind the hook eye and just do a quick three or four turn whip finish just behind the hook eye. Now this does bring your thread back across the body of the fly, but it, you really can't see it. And then snip off that tag in. And we straighten everything up just a bit and trim our parachute post. Now we almost always trim it too short so trim it about a hook gap width in length. And that usually is just about right. And our fly is about finished. Let's just straighten things up here a bit. And since we moved our thread over the body to the hook out of whip finish, I like to use a little bit of head cement just behind the hook eye. So just the tiniest of drops on those thread wraps behind the hook eye will suffice. And then with a bodkin or needle, just spread it around those threads. Now, some people like to also put a little bit of head cement around the base of the parachute post where you tie the wraps off, and that works fine, but um, this is usually sufficient. And there we have our parachute atoms. It can be a little intimidating. It does take practice to get the, the post and the wrapping the hackle down, but with a little bit of practice, it's not as intimidating as it first may seem. And this fly works great in, in a number of colors, yellow, march brown, even purple works well with the parachute atoms. So we we'll hope you give it a try. It's just a super effective dry fly.